Good morning, everyone. W welcome to day 22 of our thought for the day. Uh, we are going to be looking today at Psalm 51, uh, but we're going to pray and begin our time uh, with seeking the Lord first. Father, as we come to you this morning, we come and we praise you that this is another day in which we can praise your name, another day in which we can uh, glorify the God who is in control of all things. And we thank you and praise you for that. We thank you that we have that confidence, even as we come to you this morning, that you are the one who is in, the con in control of all the events that take place in this world today. And we thank you for that. We thank you that uh, we can trust in you completely, Lord. You will never uh, let us down. You will not forsake us. We thank you and praise you for these glorious truths. We ask that you would help us now as we um, come to your word in a few moments time to understand it Lord to apply it to our lives and Lord we pray that you would work powerfully Lord in in our world today in the different situations that we face. We first of all want to praise you and thank you for the good weather that we've been enjoying Lord. We uh, are not sure how we would have coped in lockdown were it uh, raining all the while so we just thank you and praise you for the good weather that we have enjoyed for the last few weeks and we ask Lord that you continue to be with us and help us uh, to um, Lord continue to uh, walk before you as we should in, in these days we pray and thank you for family and friends for those that encourage us and support us for those that are part of our support network Lord, Lord whatever that uh, might look like so we praise you and thank you for all who are involved in that we thank you Lord for um, your hand upon the managing of this particular crisis we pray Lord that you would continue to help governments around the world to deal with it Lord and with that in mind we pray for increased testing uh, Lord most particularly we ask that you would bring about um, the mass production of tests that the testing for this virus might be able to be um, uh, extended in, in a massive way we pray for that Lord we also pray for the appropriate supplies of um, personal protective equipment, Lord, that are needed for all carers um, and hospital staff across this country, Lord, and many others as well. So we just pray for your producing of those, Lord. I pray that companies would come up and be able to mass produce uh, these protective items as they're needed. We pray again, Lord, for the finding of a cure, Lord, for this virus that uh, it might be able to be um, held in abeyance, Lord, even got rid of, Lord. We pray for that too. Uh, we pray for wisdom, we pray for your grace to be poured out into these situations. We pray against, Lord, the trend of social distancing, shaming, Lord, that seems to be becoming popular at the moment, Lord, people poking fun at others, Lord, even though they have no understanding of, of what they're doing or where they've come from or whether they're actually even complying with the social distancing rules. So we pray, Lord, that you'd give wisdom in these days and, and keep us, Lord, from falling into that trap as well, we would ask. We pray for revival, Lord. What we desperately need, Lord, is revival in our days. We need to see people turning from their sin and seeking the Lord Jesus as their saviour. And so we ask you would do that in our day for Jesus' sake. Amen. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time that my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors, transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed. O God, you who are God my Saviour, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. And my sacrifice... O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. God will not despise. 
may it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. So have you ever asked God for mercy? Now that perhaps seems a strange question. Yet it is a question that needs to be answered. You see, every Christian must have asked God for mercy at some point. If you haven't, then you need to ask yourself the question, seriously, am I a a Christian? There is a sense in which people today seem to drift into believing in Jesus, and their testimonies, when shared, carry a vague notion of needing God, but seem to lack any sense of the seriousness of sin. Psalm 51 is written by David, when he has come to see the reality of his situation. He has gotten himself into a problem. He has slept with the wife of another. And what is abundantly clear in this psalm is the deep sense of the seriousness of sin, a deep sense of the reality of that sin pressing down upon him. In verses 1 to 6, we have David's plea for mercy. He appeals to God for the blotting out of his sins. He he, he is guilty in God's sight and he deserves the wrath of God. Yet he appeals to God's unfailing love and his compassion. He wants it to be as though there was never any sin there. He wants his sin to be so removed from him. And we might think about our sin and we might consider that that seems an impossible ask, that our sin would be thoroughly removed, that there would be no particular problem with our sin. Well, and, and that is true for David. As he is praying to God, he is struggling with this constant reminder of sin in his life. Uh, the problem is it keeps coming back into his mind and he cannot get away from it. Uh, it is that dogged, uh, ongoing uh, weight of our guilt that seems to hound us day after day. Well, verse 4 shows us that he is fully aware that it is God that he has sinned against. Certainly people were caught up in his sin, uh, but he broke the laws of God's world. He uh, violated the commands of God, and that is the big problem, and he recognises that. He knows that he is justly guilty before God. Uh, This is no foolish, I I am not a sinner moment. Um, You talk to people in these days and you you suggest to them that they are sinners, that they have done wrong in God's sight, uh, and uh, they come back at you and say, well, I'm not a sinner. How dare you call me that? Well, David has none of that thought. He understands where he has gone wrong. Or, or I'm the, well, I'm no worse than others defence. That often crops up when you speak to people about their sin. They recognise that they are sinners, but they're just not convinced that they need to be any more bothered about that than anyone else is. Well, David isn't like that. And the sad thing is he reflects on his life, verse four, 5 helps us to see, he recognises that he has never been freed from sin. There's never been a point in his life where sin has not been a problem. It's been part of his life always, he talks about, even from conception. Well, he recognises that equally in verse 6, this is not part of God's plan. God never wanted this. Now, God never wanted sin as part of our lives. Uh, and he also sees that as people, we need God's instruction. We need... Uh, God to speak into this situation to change it Um, left to himself David recognizes that he would just simply continue in sin and we recognize that too if we're honest we recognize that sin is so much a part of our lives that we would just continue to sin and think nothing of it were it not that God were to step into our lives and to change and transform that situation and that's what David pleads pleads for next transformation in verses 7 to 12 Uh, verse 7 it's only Uh, there is only one who can truly remove the stains of sin, and that is God himself. Uh, The animal sacrificial system of the Old Testament was pointed, David and and the saints of old, to understand that where sin was found, uh, blood had to be shed to pay the debt. The link to hyssop there, the link to the cleansing that takes place in in the temple, points us to, to that. And the wages of Sin is death. We understand that from the New Testament. Therefore, for sin to be washed away, a blood would need to be shed and the death debt paid. That needed to be dealt with. Well, it would be the only way to bring joy back to the one who was crushed and to the weight of, of guilty sin. It could be the only way to truly have that iniquity removed. Some one would have to die 
in your place. Some death would have to occur and blood would have to be shed in order for this to happen. Well, David looked forward to the coming of the Messiah uh, to pay that debt. And we look back and rejoice in Jesus Christ, the one who has paid that great sin debt in his death on the cross. And verses 10 to 12 acknowledge uh, the acknowledgement is that Jesus would need to provide more than just washing. He would need to make us new. So it's not that Jesus could just come and wash away our sin uh, and that we would be pure, but there would need to be a transformation that takes place. Uh, there would need to be a pure heart given to us. Uh, our old heart, which was tainted with sin, could not um, uh, survive uh, with God at work in us, as it were, we need a new heart, one that uh, would accept God, one that is a welcoming home for God in these days, a spirit that sticks to God. We would need a new heart and a new spirit. Uh, we would need God to be near us at all times, the Holy Spirit permanently in our lives, a real and tangible joy and a desire to stay on the right path. David was asking, in, in effect, for a miracle, for a, a transformation that is beyond anything that we could earthly, uh, in any earthly way come up with. Now, David had known this. He had known this joy of being forgiven, but he has fallen, and now he asks for restoration. He longs to be back experiencing the joys of walking with God, of knowing God at, in, at work in the midst of his life, of knowing that transformation of God in his life. And his sin has separated him once again from God. It has come between him and God, and he needs to repent of that. He needs to call out to God. And, and in verses 13 to 19, we have David asking for that restoration. He's appealing for that restoration. Uh, so sure is he that God will do it, that he declares, I will teach transgressors your ways. I will teach transgressors, uh, those who sin, your ways. Uh, in other words, when he is back delighting in the things of Christ, he will get alongside others who have fallen and turn them back to God. That is the beauty of being a restored believer. When you've fallen away, you can come back and get alongside those who are struggling with the same sins that you were, and you can tell them how God transforms and changes a life or oh, david carries some serious guilt with him doesn't he the kind of guilt that you cannot cannot get past without god he has the blood of another man on his hands when you have uh, taken the life of another that repeats on you you can't remove can't get beyond that it seems to come time and time again and when you are weighed down with that much guilt the last thing that you can do is sing. Well, David wants to sing again. He wants to praise God. He wants to lift his voice to him. And so he asks that God would come and remove this guilt, remove uh, this these feelings that are overwhelming him. And verse 16 tells us that David would have done whatever it took to be restored in his relationship to God. Now, do you want that in your life are you that keen that you would do anything in order that you might be restored in your relationship with God do you want him as part of your life do you want that guilt removed well verse 17 enables us to understand that what God looks for is repentance he's not looking for you to do loads of uh, as it were amazing feats in order that you might earn his approval what he's looking for is repentance the acknowledgement of sin the inability to change the laying oneself prostrate at the feet of uh, the king pleading for your life, knowing that you deserve wrath, but asking for mercy. Then God will listen. He humbles the proud, but he lifts up the humble. Are you willing to humble yourself and to plead with God for mercy, to ask for the forgiveness of your sin. Maybe you are one who doesn't even know the Lord Jesus Christ at this moment in your life. You've never met him. You've never understood who he is. You've never understood what he's done for you. Well, recognize that you are a sinner. Recognize that you need to humbly appeal to him for mercy and do that today. Do that and call out to him and he will save you. Well, maybe you're a Christian who is backslidden, that you are have gone back into walking in the ways of the world and you need to come and to plead Again, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses from all unrighteousness. Well, do that today. Don't put it off. Uh, so that once again, you can worship God aright. Sin is serious. It affects us. It affects others. It robs a soul of peace. Repent this day and be restored to the joy 
of the Lord's salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Uh, Lord, as we come to you today, we recognise that we are sinners. We recognise that we so often go wrong and we would confess that sin to you. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask that you would come again in power into our lives, that you would restore us, that you would restore this nation, Lord. This nation once called itself a Christian nation. Uh, We recognise that there are many uh, problems with that definition, but we understand that we need as a nation your righteousness in this day. And so we cry out to you for the forgiveness of our sin. We cry out to you for the many ways that we have turned our back on you as a nation and as a people. And we ask, Lord, that you would come in power again, that you would please restore this land. And we ask it, Lord, for the joy uh, of our salvation. We ask it, Lord, that we might be rejoicing in you, the Saviour who saves We ask it that you would do this and, Lord, that you would change this world because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask it for his glory. Amen.